Okay, so on the um, last bit of the project, we were looking at mind mapping. So a quick reminder of where we're going for getting our marks. Okay, so this is one part. Section A is one part of the uh, the overall 50% of the GCSE. Only comes up with 10 marks, but this is the 10 marks. This is the activity where all of your other designing kind of hangs on whether you've done this bit properly. So you, if you've done your mind map and you've explored your design problem, properly and if you've identified your client and been really really clear about that client and what they need then the rest of the design process will be really sort of straightforward because you can use those people to test your designs against okay so by now you should have a mind map and what we're about to do is our target market our intended user now I'm going to use a fictional character because I'm putting this on YouTube and I'm using this in school so for me I'm, I'm kind of fictionalizing it a little bit if you have a real person that you're able to talk to what it means is that every time you're stuck on a design decision you can go and talk to that person and so asking someone who you can actually get hold of regularly is the best way to do this sort of work if you make it up um, it really limits you to making design decisions based on your own experience and that's not what good design is necessarily about um, so although I'm saying I'm making it up, it's so that I've got, I've got a sort of broad reach on what I'm doing and I know very clearly what I'm the sort of person that I'm talking about anyway. So I'm using Tommy Stokes. He's an architect who lives in Cornwall. He's an architect who works in a team of four creating environmentally friendly buildings and environments. Now, that's important because if you've got an architect who works in an environmentally friendly firm and then they're going to design something which is non-ethical, non-responsible non in terms of the environment, then, then that's going to be hypocritical it's going to be counterproductive now designers sometimes have to work against their better instincts but um, I think for an architect who works environmentally friendly that's going to be an important part of any product that is designed for that person he has a good wage of around £30,000 so he's someone he's probably training he's, he's relatively young um, he's got quite a long way to go in his career but he's got a certain amount of money um, so he's got some disposable income but he's not rich he's not a multi-millionaire so there's some parameters it needs to be effective products which don't cost too much. Um, Tommy has thinks, uh, extra word there, Tommy thinks it's important for products to be long lasting so they need to be good quality. They need to be durable, they need to last for a long time, um, they need to be able to live up to the expectations of the way they are used without breaking down, possibly thinking about the six R's, thinking about repair and maintenance and, and reduction of the amount of materials used because again we're being environmentally friendly. Um, it doesn't mean that Tommy is not going to use a material that's a, a product that's made from plastics, polymers. Uh, providing they last a long time, they're easily recyclable, then that's, a, that's potentially a good environmental payoff. Um, it's also important for Tommy to buy and use products that are good for the environment. Again, as stated, it might be on the one hand that his company would expect him to, but on the other hand it might just be that he is deep down and passionate about the environment, as we all should be. Um, one of his biggest challenges when working from home is that he needs a good space for a large drawing, but he often keeps a sketchbook handy when sitting on a sofa. Okay, so if I think back to my my original mind maps, we were talking about kind of working in different places than maybe we normally would do. So we're not designing in this case probably for Tommy in his normal architectural office at his drawing board or at his computer. This is some something that's a little bit more um, domestic about it. Right, so... Um, now this would normally come about by you having a chat about the person or even just coming up with these ideas about someone you know and then following up with research, proper research about that person. Okay, Because we can make some assumptions but there are other things. If I said to Tommy, um, what's your biggest passion in terms of being environmentally friendly? He might talk about um, products coming from sustainable materials or he might talk about products which are um, help us to reduce um, the impact by being reusable so there might be a different slant on it than, than my best guess so by talking to a real person you get real decisions made okay that that's the flaw in this plan anyway so what I started doing because I'm going to I'm going to do a bit of copy and paste now from the internet I'm going to choose brands that I think maybe Tommy would like I'm going to choose some color schemes some buildings some products that maybe go with with what I think the lifestyle is what you would do as a designer, you'd then take a mood board or, or a lifestyle board to your client, or you would do this with the client, 
And you'd say, well, what do you think of this? And they'd say, oh, I think I want a bit more emphasis on that. I want a bit more uh, looking at these sorts of colors. I want to um, broad, uh, deepen my links with that particular brand. So by having this collection of information, it allows you to draw out the other needs and wants of your customer, your intended user, your target market. Okay, so I'm going to do a kind of one of my speeded up videos now of me collecting some examples. Remember, if you're using working digitally, Control on a on a PC, Control and C is copy. On a Mac, it's Command. Um, control and C is copy. Control and V is paste. Particularly when you're working in the cloud, that's important because. Um, other methods don't work so easily. So here we go, I will speed this up. Um, you will need to have some written information in the middle of your page or off to one side or a bottom wherever. Um, but around that you need to support that with images that are relevant to your target market. Okay, so at this point, I, um, I've collected quite a lot of imagery. Um, it's very easy to get drawn into looking at example products. Um, but what I was trying to do, I've got a couple of brands. I was thinking about the surfing lifestyle. Um, quite quickly, at, when you start searching architects, quite often you end up with this sort of minimalist, quite streamlined look of objects. Um, certainly from a environmentally friendly point of view you, you end up quite quickly looking at products which are maybe a bit woody um, and you, I, I kept all of my search in there you saw everything that I was doing I've probably collected things that are similar in nature because that's my research and that's why it's so important that you actually talk to your target market your intended user because I could go all the way down this line talking about sort of beautiful wooden finishes and come up with products that are like that. And then the target market might say, actually, no, do you know what? I really love a hard wearing um, steel finish that's, that's really highly polished. Um, and that would totally blow the design out of the water. So at this point, I think um, I'm gonna, I might continue collecting examples. I'm, I'm quite happy with what I'm finding. I quite like this, well, I love this stuff. Um, but I think I'm, I need to kind of maybe come up with a couple of big ideas and start talking to my target market and get their opinion, get their feedback on it. Okay, I'm going to give myself some next steps here in the next bit. I'm going to give myself four or five next steps, maybe a little bit of a summary. Again, if you're a target eight or nine student, it's really, really important, or, or five or six student for that matter, target uh, to, to summarize and talk about what you found out and what you're going to do as a result of that information. Okay, it's, it's really important that you don't just leave stuff sitting there. You've got to show how you're using that to meet the needs of your design brief. So that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to just type in some next steps.
Okay, so I think I'm done on this sheet now. Um, I would, I'm very, very tempted to have a bit of a play around with my graphics and my layout uh, to make sure it kind of looks really nice. I don't think this looks very nice at the moment, if I'm really honest. I don't like the graphics. I don't like the way I've got the sheet laid out. But I'm trying to keep it reasonably clear for you guys to have a look at. Um, I'd be looking at different typefaces. What, what you shouldn't do on a project like this is spend any time whatsoever using PowerPoint's default um, like design ideas. You need to come up with your basic page that, that's easy to read and do your own graphic design with it if you want a banner. Don't, don't use a stock PowerPoint. Um, I would suggest that it goes on a white background uh, if you think about printing it off and absolutely zero time should be spent on any animations or any of that kind of stuff because it just doesn't come through on, on a presentation. It's a distraction. Um, what you want to try and do, if you look at my type size there, that's down at 11. 11 or 12 point is about as big as you want to go. If, you, if you're writing in 14 point, 16 point, 18 point, um, then you, you're not doing it right as an adult, as a young adult. Um, so 12, 12 point is, is your sort of maximum really. Um, do think about your layout. Try and keep as much as you can on single pages. Don't go onto multiple pages unless you really, really need to. And um, what you do write needs to be informative. So if you're giving ex ex explanation, make sure your explanation gives the detail required. And if you're talking about next steps, you need to think, what am I going to do? So I am going to show this to my intended user. I am going to check the materials and the color scheme. I'm going to check any critical features that need to be included or avoided. Um, I'm going to look at how that my target user works and um, then I'm going to look at some existing product. Okay, so, so further research to do before I even start designing. But I have to tell you, even doing this has made my brain go, okay, I've got an idea for this, I've got an idea for that. And I would really love to start designing, which which realistically you would do, you can do. Even when you're mind mapping, you, you, you can do design work. It's not that we go through one stage after another stage after another stage. This interview, this conversation with our target market should carry on all the way through the project and the design should carry on all the way through the projects whether you're model making whether you're CAD drawing whether you're prototyping on testing it's all about your target market and whether or not your product performs its function so if you get your let's just put those two sheets together if you get your mind map done properly and your target market done properly that's a good two two and a half hour three hour job doing those properly uh, if you're taking any less time than that then you're not doing it properly um, good luck with it. Hopefully, it's quite an interesting thing to do. I certainly enjoy doing that kind of that kind of work. So, good luck and have fun.